us do tell me one more one more can jesus do he has laid he's laid the foundation he's open wide the door tell me one more one more can jesus do tell me one more
praise. Is anyone ready to praise? Ready to praise. We're not done yet. Hallelujah. My, 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 Lord is sweet. My, 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 Lord is sweet. My Lord is sweet.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Bethel Emmanuel Erdington Appreciation Service for our pastor and lady Rob. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a blessing is to see all the wonderful children of God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Erdington has come a long, long way. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I send greetings to our First Lady, Lady Yolanda. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I greet in their absence, and I know they're on their way, our Bishop, our Bishop Landell, and Lady Coronet, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I greet our Overseer, Overseer Campbell, and Lady Campbell, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And, and, I greet our Pastor. Our pastor and first lady, Rob, in that mighty, matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I greet all the wonderful officers in their respective place. I greet my wife, Mishni Gloria, and I greet, I greet all, all the wonderful children of God in the only, the only matchless name of Jesus, our soon coming King. Hallelujah, Jesus. I greet our musicians, our technical team, our praise and worship team, our catering team, and all those in the background, hallelujah, Jesus, who have helped us put on this appreciation service for our Pastor Rob and First Lady. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, Jesus. Did you know we are expecting, we are expecting fire today. We are expecting fire today, but we're not looking at the physical fire. We are looking at the anointing fire to pour down on us and in this vineyard, this vineyard of Erdington. Hallelujah, Jesus. This church has been planted for over 60 years. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the community know we are here. But just some basic housekeeping rules. We're not expecting any physical fire. But if there is a physical fire, please leave by the doors on my left. Hallelujah, Jesus. Or the doors at the back and the ushers will guide you safely out. If you wish to use the restrooms, they are in our community hall. If you leave through the back doors, somebody there will guide you. Hallelujah, Jesus. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure in passing us over to our moderator, our moderator for this evening, Minister Sonia, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Praise God. 
It is a wonderful day, praise God. It is good to be in the house of the Lord for the evening service. We have not done this for quite a while. But today is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. I was just listening to uh, Minister Gulab. And he said that Erdington has been this side of the vineyard for over 60 years. And I agree with him because I was part of that travel. I was part of that journey. And what came to my mind was Naboth on his vineyard. And um, when, when um, Ahab wanted to buy his vineyard or to, for him to give it to him, he said, it's not for sale. I cannot give my father's inheritance. And so we're here to honor God and to um, give God thanks for Pastor Rob and Sister Sandra, Lady Sandra, because they have not sold out. They have not given their vineyard away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Naboth was prepared to die. Hallelujah. And he did. But today we're in the house because we are prepared people of God to continue the work of the, 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 the Lord. Praise God. And in any vineyard that we land, we're going to work. And so this side of the vineyard, Erdington, praise the Lord, we're here to open up a program and give God thanks for these two wonderful people of God. Let us clap our hands, holy people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because we have made it this far because of the grace of God. So we thank God for the praise and worship by missionary Rihanna. Praise the Lord. And the welcome by Minister Gulab. And at this time, we are going to open in prayer. I we'll ask Pastor Delroy Unter to come and open our service in prayer now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Can we stand? Hallelujah. 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 Mighty, mighty, mighty God. We come into your presence, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we love you. We glorify you. It is an honor, and it is a privilege, Father, that God, you have allowed us access into your presence. And Father, as we come today, hallelujah, to encourage our pastor, Pastor Rob. Father God, it's a, your servant that you have chosen. You have called him. You have equipped him, Lord Jesus Christ, to lead your people. Father, we come, Lord, today to encourage him. We pray, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, that your presence will come. For, Father, if you do not come, Lord God, this will be a waste of time. But, God, you said wherever the twos or the threes are gathered, you will be in them in our midst and we are more than that number so father we are looking with expectations that god you're com- you're going to come down father we are just getting ready now lord god hallelujah to receive from you please god in jesus name take control tear up our script whatever it is that we have planned if it's not according to your will tear it up For God, we want your presence. Hallelujah. We pray now, kind Father, in Jesus' name, that God, you will touch, hallelujah, the moderator. We pray that you will touch, Lord Jesus Christ, the musicians. Touch each heart, Lord God. Hallelujah. That God, our hearts will be receptive, Lord, receiving your word. Hallelujah. And receiving the blessing. Take control now, Father God, I pray. And for those who are still on their way coming, we ask that you will hasten their footsteps and give them journey in mercy. No matter what happened, Father God, we are asking for a blessing. We just want a blessing. Come down, Father God, today. Come down today and touch somebody, Lord God. Some hearts, the hallelujah, that's mourning. Some hearts... That's torn apart. Touch somebody today, Father God. We are looking for something to happen. Hallelujah. In this service tonight, Lord God. 
Hallelujah. For you, you are the God that makes the difference. Hallelujah. We don't want to leave through the doors, Father God, the way we came. We want to be revived. And so, Father, we turn this service over into your hands and ask that you will take full control in Jesus' name. Amen. The glory. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I must give honor to the Spirit of God, and I one more time greet you in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. I greet our presiding bishop, Bishop Edmund, and uh, you, Lando, in her absence. Um, bishop um, Lando, in his absence, I believe he's on his way, and overseer Campbell, praise the Lord. <laughs> Please forgive me, praise the Lord, right beside me. Greetings. Bishop Landell, praise the Lord. And um, all the, um, the, the um, saints of God, all the pastors, praise the Lord. I greet you, all my father's children, in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. Praise God. We're going to get ready to sing our opening song, and it's Ceylon. I believe there's some sheets maybe on your chairs or to hand out. Um, well, we're going to join together one voice, praise God, and shout and sing unto the Lord, sail on, for our God bids us to sail on, praise the Lord.
command Ceylon. Praise God. We've got to be aboard to Ceylon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that song. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We're at the point where we're going to have our reading. Hallelujah. From the scripture by Minister Mumtaz. Praise the Lord as he come. Reflect on, on the book of Titus 2. From Titus 2, 7 to 13. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our scripture reading, praise the Lord, is taken from Titus chapter 2, verses 7 to 13. For those who can stand, please stand, and we'll read alternate verses. Praise the Lord. Verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptedness, gravity, sincerity. Exalt servants to be obedient unto their masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Hallelujah, Jesus. And verse 13 together. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank God for his holy words that have already been blessed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Minister Mumtaz. We are looking for that blessed hope. Praise the Lord by Jesus Christ, our com coming Savior. Praise the Lord. Praise God. At this time, we're going to um, be having a song by the um, B.I. Erdington Church, the Bethel Emmanuel Erdington Church at this time. Then get themselves together, praise the Lord, and come to us with this song. We have got to capture time because we've got to turn around of two hours. Praise God. So let us do what we do expeditiously. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Put your hand as they come. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
God, praise Thank God. Thank you, Lord. When the battle is over, oh, glory. we shall wear a crown. Yes, God. This is the day that the Lord has Hallelujah. made. Praise and we God. will rejoice and be glad Amen. in it. Praise God. Praise this Lord. evening it gives me great pleasure to stand here. Praise God. God is good all the time. Amen. Praise God. Our dear pastor and his dear beautiful wife. God knows we love you, my dear. Thank you, Jesus. And I know this is prayers answered. Uh -huh. I say it over and over. <clears throat> Praise God. We give God thanks for you. Praise God. Thanks. Nothing done before the time. Praise yeah. God. And we give God thanks for you tonight. Yeah. Praise God. And we love you and we appreciate you. Yes. And I want to say this because I might not get this opportunity again. All right. Praise God. I give God thanks to Bishop Landell and Evangelist Carnet. Yes. Because you know what? People have men like these, godly men like these. They don't want to let them go. Praise God. He could have kept him in Mount Harab. Praise God. But he released him to Erdington. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He released him to Erdington. And we are rejoicing and giving God thanks. And the next thing I want to say, brethren, Erdington will never be Erdington without small heat. All right. That's Without so small true. heat, so we true. would have we're, no earth in town. Praise God. It's small heat. Out of earth in, out of small way. heat, come earth in town. Praise God. And we thank God today. God bless you, my pastor. God bless you. Hallelujah. Mm. Right. On behalf of earth in town, Emmanuel, all these beautiful people. Yes, there you are. Amen. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have the Bethel Erdington's children coming to us now with their song. Praise the Lord in a presentation. Praise the Lord. Give them a hand again, Bertrand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You better get right with God. Come and do it now. Under the cross of Jesus, I lay my burdens now. You better get right with God. Come and do it now. Get right, get right, get right with God. Get right with God. Come and do it 
one of us had a day. We had a day. We had a day because he's a way maker. Praise the Lord. And we're here today because God kept us. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have a reflection and song from our dear Bishop Andrew Landell and Lady Coronet Landell now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise Jesus. Amen. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. Oh, most high. We're blessed tonight to have our presiding bishop in the house. Amen. Bishop Dexter Edmund. We, amen. Overseer Campbell. Uh, amen. Pastor Francis, God bless you, sir. Amen. From District 4, Pastor Raymond. Amen. And Elder Bell from District 1 as well. And the pastors of District 5, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just standing, amen. I'm glad that Mother Patrick is in the house, Mother Redmond. Amen. Some of those that go back a long way with Erdington. Amen. And I've seen it through all of its different guises up until now. Amen. She said it right. It would have been easy to have kept Pastor Rob in Mount Horeb because where he was doing a good work. Amen. But you know, one thing I have noticed before Evangelist Landell comes, Lady Carnet comes and sings, is that Evangelist Sandra wouldn't have grown the way she had and the way she has if we'd have kept her in Mount Horeb. Because it was very easy to, to hide behind her sisters. Amen. But look where God has brought us. We have seen the work here in Erdington as it has been flourishing. And the one thing that I like about them both is that they know how to pray. Amen. We used to sing a chorus way back. It said, on your knees, you're taller than trees. And we can see that they have been growing because they spend their time. If Missionary Smith was here, she'd say more neology and less theology. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I'm just blessed to see the work here in Erdington. Amen. And that's the real reflection that I have. Stay on the Lord's side. Stay at his feet. Recognize that these are not your people. It's his people. It's not your church. It's his church. And he will continue to enlarge the coast of your territory. The next time we come, amen, I want to know that we are dedicating this building for Bethel. All right. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Before I sing or say anything, Dr. Una Davis has asked me to relay her salutations. I'll give this to you afterwards. It's so beautiful. And she says, precious greetings, Pastor Morris and Missionary Sandra. It's indeed an honor celebrating with you your first ministerial Thanksgiving service. I wish I could be with you in person, but circumstances has not allowed it. However, I am with you in spirit of brotherly love, in the spirit of brotherly love, or for political correctness, I will say sisterly love. You have been called anointed. You have been called anointed, appointed, and positioned to serve God's people at this crucial time of world history. Your calling is an honorable call, one which comes with much responsibilities for yourselves first and for the people who God has placed in your pastoral care. Stay strong and be faithful to he who has called and appointed you. Thanksgiving service is always time of reflection. My prayer is that as you both celebrate this auspicious occasion, with the people of God and with the friends of Bethel Erdington and elsewhere, you will reflect on the journey you have traveled and the battles you have fought. Please understand that the God then is the God now. For many years, he has been your traveling companion and your deliverer every step of the way. And he will continue to be all that and much more. He is God of his promise. Having been in pastoral ministry for 48 years until three years ago, 
I have experienced mountains and the valleys. But most of all, I have experienced the power of private prayer, being along with God, and communal prayer with God and his people. Your ministry will only be strong as your prayer life. In closing, I encourage you to spend quality time not only with God, but with your family. I'm going to say that bit again, because I don't know if most pastors get this bit. In closing, I encourage you to spend quality time, not only with God, but with your family. God created the family before he instituted the church. Many of our children may not continue in the gospel, but they can never outrun our love and prayers for them. Please enjoy the blessings of the evening. Remember this celebration happens once yearly. Make the best of it. And there's a smiley face emoji. Please email me your blank bank details so that I can forward you an offering. God bless you as you walk, as you continue to walk in victory. Dr. Una Davis, District 7. God bless you. I just wanted to bless you in song on your journey. Because I know that the journey at the start can always be honeymoon time. Praise God. But when the valleys come, you need that reserve of honeymoon time. You need what, what you received and the prayers that you felt then, the hugs that you felt, the smiles that you felt when things were going well. And just remember that just like anybody, including pastors and pastors' wives, people can change. But it doesn't mean that change is once and for all, where it should be ever evolving. So if somebody's down angry, murmuring today. Tomorrow, if you know how to deal with them, they could be smiling and laughing and giving you the hug back. So this song is just to encourage that. And then we've got a little love basket from the Landell family. God bless you. With a maid of mine With a maid of mine I'll be willing to go all the way through, though it costs my life. I'll be willing to pay the price, cause I, I've got heaven. It's in my view. So if it means that I have to walk alone, if it means that my friends become few, ooh, Cause I, I've got heaven, it's in my view. With a maid of mine, with a maid of mine, just be willing to go all the way through if it cost your life just be willing to pay the price and you you'll have heaven in your view so if it means that to walk alone if it means that your friends become few Ooh. don't you worry about what men say 
or two just you you keep heaven you you keep heaven I said you you keep heaven in your view we love you God bless you amen God bless you both enjoy the content in Jesus name Amen. And we would just like to say thank you to the brethren here in Erdington for recognizing your pastor in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've got heaven in my view. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've got a made up mind surely mean to go through. I've got a made up mind surely mean to go through. I've got a made up mind. Surely mean to go through oh, Some this way, some that way Come over here, let us pray I've got a made up mind Surely mean to go through I've got a made up mind Surely mean to go through I've got a made up mind Surely mean to go through from Bethel District 5, praise God, by our Pastor Andre Codner coming to us now to do that in Jesus' name. I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me, and he might can depend, for I know I have salvation. I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me. Pastor Rob, we honor God 
for us being here this evening. It is truly a blessing from God when we all get to fellowship together. I honor the spirit of the Lord unto all God's wonderful people today. From the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 10. Say God, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed towards his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. God has planted you here in Erdington, a tough soil because of the constituency in which you're in. But God is able. If God bring you to it, he has got the ability to bring you through it. And we come to support you this evening and to encourage you. Be determined. Be steadfast. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And God will show you great and mighty things which you have never seen. But he's able to do it. On the behalf of District 5, and in this technological age that we're living in, we've got some envelope, but we've got some stuff online. Okay, so, so we are going to be doing some online transfer. But we didn't want you to go home empty pocket today or empty purse. So on the behalf of District 5, from Mount Horeb, with love. You can do better than that. All the way from Leicester with love. All the way from Small Heath with love. Derby with love. Hall Green with love. And Bethel New Life is online with love. Bless you, District 5 pastors and leaders. Praise the Lord. Let us give them a hand again. One more time, praise the Lord. We're getting ready to get some presentation from the visiting districts. Praise the Lord and pastors. So if I can call um, uh, um, Pastor Raymond Norm to come to us and make it short, please, because we have a very short time turning around. So, and um, followed by the... Um, the other pastors, praise the Lord. Oh, the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing for the ways going bright and the souls are on the way. We are going by and by to the palace of the king, saying, Praise the Lord. God bless you. It is an honor to be here. I am so blessed and I just come to encourage you in Jesus' name from the saints in Wellington, from my dear wife and all the saints in Wellington. Bless you in Jesus' name. This is a token of our love and our love is to pray for you always in Jesus' name. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back for I want to see my Jesus Great. Up, and I won't turn back. Amen. Giving greetings tonight to President Bishop Dexter, Bishop Landell, Overseer, all the pastors here, various districts, and to all of God's wonderful people and your wives, and to our Pastor Rob tonight, and Missionary Rob, Lady Sandra, God bless you. It's a privilege, and I'm grateful that I can take part in this service tonight. God has truly been good to us, and I'm grateful tonight, myself, Evangelist Sadie's hiding somewhere at the back. We've got Elder Marlon, 
Amen for better all saints. And so with that in mind, I'm just grateful tonight to stand here to say that he will be going to great and a good work in you. He's able to continue that to the end. Pastor Rob, we were there from the start. I'm not going to go back to history. But we were there from the start. I remember when you came and you gave your life to the Lord. And here you are tonight. What a great God we serve. He's amazing. And if we wait upon the Lord, be of good courage. He will continue to strengthen our hearts. And we know tonight, by the grace of God, you'll make it. God bless you tonight. God bless you on the work here in Bethel Herdington. I know the Lord is working on, on you and working on the church. And he continued to do so for us. Amen. You know, a pastor colleague of mine sent me uh, just an extra a couple of months ago. And I just really, while I sat there, I was going through WhatsApp. I know the time is of the essence. But just dealing with pastors. And I know tonight the name seems so glossy and it seems so wonderful. Pastors. But tonight I just want to reiterate a couple of these words. Verses that this dear beloved brother of mine sent me. Um, sorry, beat me. Sorry about this. Uh, just said that, but I'm going to get it up. Sorry, brethren. Here we are. Uh, and pastor work is a tedious job, but seems like a lazy job. Does that make sense? A pastor's job seems a very tedious job, but seems like a lazy one. But along that, he says, no one knows what a pastor's hear, what a pastor see, what the secrets he must keep. The temptation he encounters, the tears he shed, the sorrows he endure. It's quite a lengthy extract. The loneliness he managed, the bitterness he experienced. And through all of this, I know that God will take you from where you've started to the end. So in all of this, be of good courage tonight. The Lord Jesus will strengthen your heart. God bless you. Can you pray for you? For myself and better all saints tonight. This is a love gift to you and your dear wife. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you tonight, my brother. Praise God. We're going to call Pastor Mark Daly now to come and do his presentation. Amen. I don't want to disappoint Mark Jr. He came with a song, so... so. said to the brotherhood team that I wanted to use people that had not been used before. I said, who are you going to use? I said, Minister Rob. He says, we've never heard him teach or preach. I said, I know him by spirit. And he did a grand job up in Nottingham. And we've been in touch ever since. 
Who would have known we would have been elevated to pastors? But God. So as you stand on the shoulders of Elder Rawlings, who led this church for many years, my encouragement to you is to continue. The scripture says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Minister Michelle is here, but she popped out for a moment. But just we just want to give God thanks for you from Bishop Lewin and District 6. Continue as we continue to pray for you in Jesus' name. Give him a hug. We're going to ask the ushers to come, praise the Lord, and stand before us and bless the night offering by um, um, Deacon All and Brother Richard. So, so come and everyone can take part in giving, praise the Lord, at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you bestowed upon us. And even the Father, at this point in time, Lord, we are going to take an offering. We ask that you'll bless and sanctify it for the work that it will do in Jesus' name. Amen. It's not by might. Hallelujah. It's not by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord. It's not by my
Celebrating as we hand over to our dear Bishop Landell now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give a hand to Minister Sonia and the way the Lord has enabled her to lead the service so far. Amen. We are blessed. As I said, we have two more items to go. One is to hear the word of the Lord and then the final thanks from Pastor Rob. We're going to ask, amen, him to wait until the very end. Amen. Amen. Because then all we would need to hear is the benediction. <laughs> Amen. But until then, I just ask everyone just to, is there a song that's coming before the bishop? I'm not sure if there is a, is a, is a song. Amen. Evangelist Redman, is that? Sh Sherry. Is that good? Redmond, is it Richards? Yes, amen. God bless you. Praise Jesus. We're going to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. From Bishop, whatever the Lord has laid on his heart, his words of encouragement to Pastor and Missionary Rob. But before he comes, we're going to hear Evangelist Redmond. Amen. Just give us one verse of her song. And then after that, the next voice you hear will be that of Bishop Dexter Edmund, our presiding bishop in Jesus' name. Mother Redman, amen. God bless you. Amen. That's right. Give her some encouragement as she's coming. It's been a blessed evening so far. Amen. And we give the Lord his praise. This is one of those foundation stones of Bethel Emmanuel Erdington. And look how God has blessed us that she's still here ministering for the Lord. Amen. Must be some 50 plus years. Amen. This corner of the vineyard. But God bless you. God pities his children, he cares for his own, with love true and tender, no mortal has known, what ear you may wonder, what ear you may do, oh dear one remember, he careth for you. He careth for you. He careth for you. 
Oh, dear one, remember He careth for you. He careth for you. Can we give Mother Redman a God bless you? <laughs> Those of you that can stand, just stand for me just for a moment and turn and tell the person next to you, the Lord is on your side. Amen. No matter what you're going through, bless you, Bishop. Tell somebody else, no matter what you're going through, the Lord is on your side. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. I am delighted and privileged tonight to be here in Erdington to celebrate with Pastor Rob and his dear wife on this anniversary service to my brother in the Lord and our district bishop here in District 5. I'm glad when I go places and I see other members of the Board of Bishops. Uh, I was in uh, Deacon Harvey and I were in Chesterfield just last night and uh, I saw Bishop Lewin and I said whenever I, see, if, whenever I see them I'm glad because if the bullets start flying I can hide behind them. Yeah. And so I'm blessed to be here with Bishop Landell tonight and his dear wife and to all of these great pastors, Overseer Campbell and Minister Sonia, and all of the pastors. If you have a pastor, clap and give God praise for your pastor. <laughs> district one and, and all of the various districts that have been represented here tonight. I'm going to just say a few words. Uh, because it really, it looks like you really want to end at seven, and I'm not trying to interrupt that plan. That's a good plan. But whatever it is that Mother Redmond and Mother Patrick are eating, I want to eat that. They look absolutely amazing. For as long as I can remember, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I, um, I grew up, as many of us did, and it's for as long as I've known, there was an Erdington church. There's always Mother Redman and Mother Patrick. Sister Connie, you don't look bad either. God bless you. Must be, <laughs> must be something in the genes. But I do give God praise. You know, I sat next to uh, sit next to Officer Campbell, and we just began to reminisce about uh, Minister Harris and Elder Rawlings and these great men and women and as I uh, listen to Mother Redmond tonight and Mother Patrick I'm inspired Bethel because this is why we must continue this is why we must keep this vision alive uh, this Bethel family that for over 60 years now, God has been with us, and you do not stay together unless God is with you. Uh, many years ago, I shared this on last night, I was a young minister, and we were in the old Kelvin way, and Elder George Peter King came up to me, he had this deep voice, and he said, he didn't call me Minister Dexter. He said, Brother Dexter, in Jamaica, we only stone Aki tree if Aki is on it. And I've never forgotten that. And uh, 
You should always know that you're doing a good job in the kingdom when the enemy attacks you. That's the principle of what he's saying. And so we're grateful to God for this family tonight. Just look at somebody and say, thank God for you. And as God help us, we're going to stay together. I just, um, my wife and I, and 10 of us from the UK just got back from Edmonton, the Bethel Edmonton Convention. And I think the Bethel UK Convention is the best convention ever. But, but um, if you want to go to a convocation, I mean, we had a blessed time. And Pastor Grange and his wife and the brethren there took such very good care of us. And so, as again, the Bethel family all over the world, God is keeping us and blessing. And then this week, uh, the convocation in New York and Brooklyn, on Friday of this week, Bishop Barnes and Mother Barnes will celebrate 60 years of ministry. 60 years of pastoral ministry. And so Bishop Simmons and I will be going to represent his pastoral ministry began in, we didn't call it Telford back then. We call it, it was Wellington. And so we're going there to honor him and to be part of the convocation. So your prayers are needful. Pastor Rob and Sister Rob, we give God praise for them, don't we? And their courage. Uh, I'm just going to throw something in here. Um, uh, Mother Patrick's reminded us that Bishop released uh, Minister Rob, is that right? And uh, she said that like he's the only one that released folks. have to release. It's not the releasing, you know, that's, that, that's only part of it, is the willingness for the person to go. That's the other part of it. You can release a person, but the person must be willing to go. And so we're grateful to God that they have come. Amen. And as mother said, they are the answer to prayer. Amen. Because it is God's plan that every church have a pastor. Amen. In uh, six minutes, Ephesians chapter 4, the apostle writes to the church, and he said in Ephesians chapter 4, he gave some to be apostles. I'm in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. He said he gave some to be apostles. Is that right? And then he said, some he gave to be prophets. Then some he gave to be evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Verse number 12 says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The pastoral assignment is one of, if not the most challenging assignments that God can call someone to. And it really must be that God calls you to do it. Because if he doesn't call you to lead and pastor, it will absolutely drive you out of your mind. It drives you out of your mind when he calls you to do it. I have said for many years that I have absolutely, I totally understand why Moses struck the rock. And whether or not he was, he was wrong to do it, I get it. And the Lord charged him for it. But you can be leading God's people and become so overwhelmed and so frustrated that you will do things that you will later regret. 
And that's why it's important that we do not lead frustrated or with frustration. Uh, I, I was at a pastor's conference some years ago, and uh, I felt a little intimidated because they asked, the, we were in this large group, and they were asking us, what did we do for relaxation? And some said, oh, I play golf. And others said, oh, I go fishing. I'm really starting to be intimidated now because it was coming to me. And I, see, because what I do to relax is watch Netflix. I find something that's just going to take me away. Don't tell anybody I told you that. I rest. And you have to do that. You have, because this thing will drive you crazy if you let it. And we must find times of retreat. Jesus taught us that. That every now and then you've got to step away. And Jesus stepped away when he was at his most successful. When, when people were talking about him the most. When his fame was at his highest, Jesus slipped away. And teaches us that in order to do this, we must be well. And so thank God for pastors and thank God for those who give themselves to the pastoral ministry. And Paul says that he gave some to be pastors. He gave some to be apostles and for those that I'm finishing now, many will call this the five-fold ministry. Some say, well, it's the fourfold because they believe the pastor and the teacher is one gift. I don't have an issue with that. But for clarity tonight, we call it the fivefold ministry. And every one of us that uh, lead in ministry as a pastor must have within our toolkit these five gifts. We must. Um, we will never call anybody within our church an apostle. And it's not something I believe that we had apostles among us. Amen. I believe our, our fathers were apostles among us. We absolutely, in every definition of the calling, they checked those boxes. But I don't think they would ever want us to call them an apostle. But just because we do not call a person an apostle doesn't mean that the work and the ministry of the apostle must continue. And the role of the apostle is to provide government. Yes, the role of the apostle is to provide order. Remember what Paul says to the church at Corinth when he is calling, when he's writing to them to correct the behavior as it relates to the Lord's Supper. Remember what he said right at the end? He said, and the rest I will set in order when I come. And Pastor Rob, there will come a time when you must, I say this to all of us as pastors, there comes a time when you must set things in order. If a local congregation is out of order, the first place we must look is the pastor. Let me try it on this side. No, if there are things that's not right in the local assembly, don't start with the praise team. Don't start with the band. Don't start with the ushers. You must start with the person who has been assigned as the angel of that congregation to keep things in order. I said this morning that the reason why this role is so important is because, especially today, we're living in a time of, uh, there is a spirit of defiance that's in the church. A spirit of defiance. Amen. That's, okay, I got three minutes now. I said today, and I'll say it again, Bishop Landell, at least when Adam and Eve sinned, they hid themselves. At least they said, no, no, no. 
But today, there is a brazen, defiant spirit. People will flaunt their disobedience. Amen. It's as if, as if it, I dare you to rebuke me. It's a spirit. I dare you to correct me. And yet it is the role of the pastor. I used as an analogy and as an illustration, Eli. The Bible says of Eli, he had two sons that were out of order. And because he did not restrain them, the Lord held him responsible. In fact, the Lord says to Eli, and, I, and I'll, I'll paraphrase this, he said to Eli, you have given more honor to your sons than you have to me. So the pastor, and that's why, beloved ones, I want in all of our churches that we take the time, just like we've done today, to honor the pastor and his wife. Clap your hands and give God praise. We must. We must. And I, I, we have some pastors, and they know who they are. I tease them all the time. Oh, I don't want no Thanksgiving service. I don't want no Thanksgiving service. I said, listen, if you don't have it, you make it hard for the one who's coming after you. Because when the person that comes after you want one, they're going to say, well, the last pastor didn't have one. It is a good thing to give thanks for what God has done. And God does not mind who we praise second as long as we praise him first. So the pastor is, has an apostolic mantle to keep things in order. Because how many people know that the devil is the author of confusion? Amen? And pastors, there will be time, I'm almost finished, but I said that before, that demons will come to church, you know. And their goal is to disrupt things. Am I teaching all right? But, but we had some some old ushers, I, I, the church I grew up in, we had some ushers. They, they were as anointed as the pastor. No, you're not really grown. We had some ushers when the demon would come. Hear them. Not today. No, they didn't leave all of that for the pastor to do. They let the demon, because seen they're keeping the door, they let them know, not today. Make sure you behave yourself today, the pastor. And we must help the pastor. You're an elder, you're a minister, you're serving in a local assembly, you are there to assist the pastor. And we cannot just let the pastor have to do everything. Somebody got to say, no, pastor, I got this. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Every now and then, say, no, pastor, I got this. I, let me handle this. Then, Paul said, he has given some to be prophets. Now, the role of the prophet is to guard the church. Prophet is the watchman on the wall. The apostle is called to govern, to provide government. The prophet is there to guard. Yes, and the pastor must be the watchman on the wall. The pastor must be able to see what's coming before it comes. He must have that discernment. Pastor, get up sometimes if something ain't right. Amen. Y'all didn't have the past that I came up in, man. Church would be going and you think we're having a glorious time. But the pastor said, mm -mm, something, 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 something. Because he is the watchman on the wall. And he has to watch. Amen. And, and don't know, for those of us who grew up in the church, the pastors we grew up with, they believed in rebuke. We, we don't do all that stuff now, but they didn't care who was in church. First Sunday, people there with their baby blessing, he didn't care. Amen. In fact, let me tell you something about the old. And beloved ones, we, you know, we're young pastors and bishops, but we mustn't throw away all the things that the fathers did, you know. Can I tell you something about them? They used to come unsaved, used to bring their, their children to be dedicated, right? And as soon as bishop, I'm talking about my father now, as soon as he dedicate them, they gone. <laughs> I 
After about the third time, hear the bishop. Oh, no, that's not going to happen again. He would preach for about an hour and a half. Y'all not saying nothing to bishop tonight. He would preach for about an hour and a half. Then those days, every service ended with a tarian service. And then hear him afterwards. All right, we have some babies to be blessed now. Okay. No, what they were teaching us, don't let people come and run you. Am I in the right church tonight? Can't let people come into church and tell you what to do and how you're going to do it. You're the prophet on the wall. And every now and then, the prophet must lift up his voice, spare not, and speak as an oracle of God. Then the pastor has an evangelistic anointing. The apostle governs, the prophet guards, and the evangelist gathers. Yes, there must be that evangelistic anointing that wherever we go, we're inviting somebody to Jesus by our lives that we live. Then the pastor guides. That's the gift of the pastor. The Lord says to Jeremiah, I will give you pastors after mine own heart. To feed you with knowledge and understanding. It is the pastor that now guides the church as the shepherd. And then the teacher grounds. And it is this office of the teacher that I want to finish on tonight. Because if there is ever a time, Pastor Rob. You must take up that teaching mantle. Because so much false doctrine is coming into the church. False teachers have risen up everywhere. I said in Canada, Bishop Dunn, you say it all the time. I said in Canada, I was there and I said, there was a time when the enemy of the apostolic church was a Methodist. Do you hear what I'm saying? As an apostolic preacher, your greatest opponent would be a Presbyterian. But today, even within the apostolic family, amen, false teachers have risen up. And it is important that the pastor now must have the authority to correct false teaching. And to let people know that's not how it go here. Amen, absolutely, because... We have been infiltrated with it. Whether it be on social media. Amen. Everybody now is a prophet. Everybody now has a word. Everybody has a ministry. And if you're not careful. I said again this morning. Just because it sounds similar doesn't mean it's the same. And so we must develop the church and develop the saints to be able to decipher that which is truth from that which is error. And so, Pastor Rob, we honor you tonight and your dear wife. We continue to pray for you that God would strengthen you. Because as Paul says to Timothy, perilous times has come. And let me share this with every pastor. It's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. I, I was watching something. My wife and I were watching something on TV. And I saw what I believe was a woman. A female. Oh, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? No, beloved one. She looked. Can I just be? I mean, she looked good. No, I'm going to tell you. My wife was right there. I said, baby, she looked good. I, when I say look good, she looked good. Looked like she was a female. Sounded like she was a female. And then she said to the person, I was born a man. And I said to myself, Reverend, your discernment must not be as sharp as it need to be because and I'm telling you saints 
This is why we need to have the anointing of God. Because we are living in a time now when the enemy has unleashed everything. Let's give God praise for Pastor Robin is here. God bless you both. Come on, give them a standing ovation, will you? God bless you both. Heaven smile upon you. This is our prayer. Praise the Lord, everyone. We give the Lord thanks for our presiding bishop and the words of encouragement that he has given to Pastor Robin to the church today. At this time, Pastor Morris Robin, in Jesus' name. Let's praise the Lord, brethren. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Giving God thanks for each and every one of you today. That you've took the time out to support myself and Lady Sandra also in Jesus' name. And just before I pronounce the, the benediction, giving thanks also for Sister Renee. Renee Landau. Hallelujah. Right, sitting right at the back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is a good God. I said to Bishop, she's coming home. And here she is, by the mercy of God. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Stand with me as we close. In Jesus' name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, I strength and my Redeemer. God bless you again, brethren. Please do not leave without taking something home with you. Just step next door and, and, and grab something before you go. In Jesus' name. <laughs>